Hi, I am looking at this refinement uh, Kalinjek and whenever looking at a refinement and a posterior open bite, I always want to look at the initial Kalinjek to see the initial presentation of the patient, um, see where they're coming from, where we're at now, what movements were intended to happen, which ones worked well, which ones did not work well, um, and then any other uh, additional liners treatment plans. So looking at the initial presentation in the middle here, I can see that this patient is class three. Um, it, it's a slight in the molars, but then even more so in the uh, canines and class three on the right hand side with some undersized laterals. The lower anterior teeth, let me take this off. Uh, the lower anterior teeth being in a lingual inclination, um, that's also an indication that this person's mandible wants to come forward and is being trapped by the anterior teeth. So these are generally the most difficult cases to solve. Um, so let's go ahead and look at this ClinCheck and just see what movements were intended um, in which there was a lot of lower anterior intrusion, some kind of intrusion of the posterior teeth, okay? And then was intended to, this looks like it would have been a virtual jump where the software is going to then just assume that all the jaw comes together better. So um, what's a warning sign um, are a lot of the second molar movements as these teeth are not uh, going to move very predictably if they move at all, um, especially a big intrusion wow. of a lower molar and a crossbite correction. Um, looking at the next ClinCheck on the left-hand side, we can see that those movements absolutely did not happen. Um, and it uh, looks like it's actually almost the same. So it looks almost like the, these premolars didn't really work at all. The crossbite correction is, or crossbite still stuck here. Um, but the lower anterior alignment, that certainly improved. And that makes sense because the buckle movements are the easiest for the, the teeth to do. Um, that those round buccal lingual movements have very little resistance. Um, so that's where we did get some benefit there while a lot of these teeth were still hung up. Um, a lot of these it's, uh, even first molar movements are very unpredictable and the entire AP change that is presented here is not likely to happen clinically in which that's exactly what we found on uh, the, second, uh, the, sec the second round of aligners. Um, these molar movements uh, can tip the molars rather than move them um, and without bite ramps here which are hard to place because of the near end-to-end -end bite it's very possible for the molars to passively intrude so those could have been contributing factors to the posterior open bite but more so of what we're seeing presented now I think is a function of being a anterior interference because uh, there were so many other types of movements being planned on the initial ClinCheck that there wasn't much control over the lower anterior intrusion. Um, so you can see that these teeth are still um, uh, in a higher plane than the posterior teeth. And as well as the AP movement just flat out not happening as well. Um, and so these anterior teeth are still stuck with each other. Um, in fact, what I find a lot of times happens with these trapped class three patients is even with lower IPR and creating overjet, the mandible then still wants to come even more forward given the opportunity and they start to look even more class three, which is what's starting to look like the appearance of what's happening here. So um, I think that definitely is a contributing factor because this uh, set of additional liners was a much improved setup with no molar movement um, and retention attachments through the premolars, which should help with the lower anterior retraction. Um, and I took off, let's see if there was IPR planned. Yes, so IPR planned here. Um, so the lower anterior should have retracted back um, and should have helped relieve the anterior interference. Now, any of the intrusion, I think, needs to be 
over uh, corrected because intrusion is a movement that the body tends to resist. And so I would have, uh, on the ClinCheck here, um, it, just critiquing it, would have planned for more intrusion um, rather than, uh, than just retracting back. And then some of these uh, premolar movements, I can understand them to try to correct the crossbite, but these lower molars tend to not move lingual. Fortunately, the upper premolars did. And so now we're looking at a crossbite that's nearly corrected, not quite, um, but improved and still an anterior interference, which is the main cause of this posterior open bite. Um, so how do we solve it now? Well, for an adult patient, um, and this patient is not a teenager, uh, we using elastics can help encourage the lower anterior teeth to retract, um, but is not going to be correcting this class three step. And I pulled up the patient's photos to show that this is, um, so this is not a teenager, um, but that's the next thing that we need to be evaluating is what can we do buccolingual in the anterior to resolve this anterior interference? Because the next set of solutions are to do uh, as much lower anterior IPR as possible and or set up for restorative around the undersized laterals, so creating some space on the upper arch. Um, and then if that's not enough to get a, a positive overjet, then we need to leave space distal to the canines. And the limitation of how much we can move the upper anterior six forward um, is going to be how much buccal bone this patient has. Um, and so I think we have some space to leave possibly uh, space distal to the canines, but I think trying to restore uh, the upper laterals, make those more proportioned with the centrals, and doing as much anterior IPR as possible, even though posterior IPR has already been done, um, that realistically uh, is the, the solution here to try to create some overjet um, with this patient who's, who's very much class three. An alternative would be to look at doing an extraction. However, that's an unpopular uh, a solution for most of our adult patients, especially once we've already gotten them into you know, somewhat of uh, alignment here. Uh, so doing all of these box elastics across um, the, you know, the left-hand side um, and trying to just pull the premolars together vertically uh, really might be a temporary solution um, because once this patient goes into retention, the, man the mandible is going to want to come forward again. So just trying to explain where we're starting from, things to look out for, and how class three patients can be uh, difficult to treat and some of the options to, to work from as this is not a ClinCheck that I would want to accept uh, for this type of posterior open bite and issue.